It's been a rough year, and a lot of investors have had losses, particularly technology stocks. Tax loss harvesting allows investors to sell securities at a loss and offset those losses against capital gains taxes on other securities. You can use ETFs for tax loss harvesting. Let's talk with DJ Turney. He's the senior portfolio strategist at Schwab Asset Management Solutions. And my old pal Dave Nodick. He's the financial futurist at Betify. Joins me here at the NYSE. DJ, you're the face of Schwab ETFs to clients. Explain how some of them are using ETFs for tax loss harvesting. Sure, Bob. We, we spoke earlier and I gave the example about uh, an investor maybe selling a total return bond fund. Chances are, if you've invested in a total return bond fund any time in the last five years in a taxable account, you're likely at a loss between 12 and 15 percent. So you have this opportunity before the end of the year to sell that fund, realize the loss, stay invested by buying an aggregate bond ETF, and you can do two things. You can lower your tax obligations. And you can also lower your expenses uh, in your investment on an ongoing basis. So we're yeah, seeing so that. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Co continue, DJ. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. So we're seeing that. We're seeing it across asset classes. You know, bond funds are one example. Emerging markets are another, you know, and, and then really any asset class. With emerging markets and bonds, chances are you're at a loss if you've invested over the last few years. With U.S. equities, the window gets a little bit more narrow. The purchase would have had to happen in the last 18 months or so for you to be at a material loss. Yeah, so can you do this with, that's an interesting question here. Can you do this with ETFs? I mean, with, with equity ETFs. So suppose you have an S&P 500 fund. Yeah. It, it's down this year, right? You're yeah, down. no, this is the perfect year to do this. One of the biggest problems with tax loss harvesting is we had such a great run. It was hard to find that moment to actually book those losses. With ETFs, the only thing you really need to be careful of is you can't go exactly the same. So you can't sell your S&P 500 ETF to buy another S&P 500 ETF. You have to be able to sit there in front of some tax auditor who might actually question whether or not they're identical exposures. If they're identical exposures, you need a period of time to pass or it's a wash sale. But you could absolutely sell your S&P 500 fund and say buy a Russell 1000 fund. You can get away with that all day long. And uh, there is a limit to the, it's the $3,000 limit here. To yeah, I mean, there's, a certain, there's the only losses. a certain amount you're going to be able to do this. You can't book millions and millions of dollars of losses and then never pay taxes again. You know, I'm doing this again this week because I got a lot of inquiries about this. Is there actual signs that this is really a phenomenon? I mean, can we actually track that people are using the ETFs for it's tax It's difficult losses? to go apples to apples just because it's difficult to know that you're selling your shares of an ETF and I'm buying my shares. But what we can see is in aggregate, the moves out of big blocks of ETFs. For instance, we saw a lot of folks book their losses in value. We had big outflows in some of the value funds yeah. last week. We've seen big inflows into really core exposures yeah. like an IVV or a VOO. Those things, to me, smell like tax loss harvesting. DJ, can, can we track this in any way? Can, can Schwab track this? Is there any signs that people are doing this? I, I, I think there is because I'm getting inquiries about it. This implies that, you know, in, the interest level is pretty high in it, but I can't quantify it. Yeah, I, I agree with Dave that, that you can't always look at flows and make absolute conclusions as to what's happening on. The nature of uh, the way ETFs trade on an exchange is we don't exactly know. But there are telltale signs that this is going on. Well, one, you know, in talking to advisors, I hear about them talking about this. We're getting questions on strategies and tactics and how to do it. And then in a macro level, if you look at the inflows into ETFs, and I know we may talk about that at some point, but the, the massive inflows into ETFs in aggregate compared to the outflows in mutual funds would suggest this may be happening. And so, uh, it, and I do want to make a point, that $3,000 limitation, that's really only a limitation against ordinary, offsetting ordinary income. If you've got uh, material gains that you've realized through some other investment this year, then the losses can offset them one for one, and there is no limit. It could be hundreds of thousands of dollars, it could be millions of dollars, if you had capital gains to offset. So the, the, the opportunities can be very significant, and again, as David said, the time is now. It's a unique year where we've had these material losses. Yeah. It's a really a great time to engage with an advisor right now in the month of December before the end of the year. Yeah, it's, it, I bet you there's a lot of uh, very heavy conversations going on for the first time in a long time. We just haven't had to deal with this in so many years. Yeah, it's, and it's like amazing. You know, I haven't done a story on tax laws harvesting, and I, I literally don't remember. Well, the other thing is we've seen huge dispersion in returns. So for every, you know, Tesla that may be down 50 percent, there is something else that's up. We saw yeah. the rally in energy, et cetera. So it's not impossible that you might actually have some great trading gains that you want to offset with some of those longer-term positions.